We all know what a horseless carriage is. We grew up with them. Had to ride in the back of them with annoying siblings and parents that could never give us a satisfactory answer to the question, are we almost there yet? And we longed for the day when we could stand in line at the Department of Motor Vehicles and have some woman take portraits of our zit-ridden faces and laminate them to plastic cards that would give us the authority, yes, the authority to cruise up and down Main Street and burn a little rubber without any adult supervision. The average 16-year-old boy in America would rather have his own set of wheels than make out with the captain of the varsity cheerleader squad. How can we desire a machine more than another human being? Well, the answer is quite simple yet absolutely profound. Every driving machine has a body. But for a cube of metal alloys and composite materials to become a living, breathing entity worthy of our interest, our passion, and our drool, we must have a soul. For a body without a soul is just a lifeless, inanimate frame that will one day be returned to the elements from which it came. So it is up to the maker of the machine to breathe life into its creation. A slow, thoughtful, meaningful breasts that penetrate deep into the bronchioles of the mechanical embryo, providing it with the vital oxygen of originality that will allow it to take on a life of its own. The machine cannot say it's greater than the maker without the hands of the maker, the machine is just a lump of mineral. Nor can the maker say the machine is beneath him, because every component of the machine carries the unique double helix of his own DNA. The line of demarcation between maker and machine has become blurred, because through the process, the two have become one. The maker is the voice of the machine. The machine is the echo of the maker's soul.